Welcome to this presentation about the 10 common occlusion traps that destroy your dentistry. I'm Dr. Nada Albatish from Toronto, Canada. Let's talk for a minute about my patient's smile on this screen and why occlusion matters. This young lady was referred to my practice with extremely low confidence in her unesthetic preoperative smile. All she wanted was veneers, so our plan was a smile makeover. How do we know that what we create will last and that the patient will be comfortable chewing and speaking? And how do we ensure that we won't be responsible for fixing broken teeth for years to come? When we do this type of dentistry, we have to be mindful that we don't just focus on the aesthetics and forget about the function, because function is what creates some of the biggest successes and greatest failures in dentistry. My goal today is to highlight some key occlusal concepts for you so that when you're back in your office, you're looking at patients with a new set of eyes and asking different questions that will help you confidently and predictably diagnose and treat your patients. Let's start with Mary. Mary had a bridge done on her front teeth a couple of years ago. You might think that decay caused this, but this bridge didn't last nearly as long as you would expect. Now take a look at Mary's bite. Not a whole lot of occlusal space for that bridge and obvious wear on her teeth. This was actually a force fracture. The challenge now is, how do we restore anything in that space and not have this happen again. Whether your goal is cosmetic dentistry, comprehensive dentistry, or single tooth dentistry, occlusion impacts the success of your work. When we check occlusion after a single tooth restoration, is it reasonable that the goal be to remove all the blue marks off the restoration? What if you're doing a whole quadrant? What if you were doing all four quadrants? How can you remove the occlusion from everywhere? I've had patients in my practice that have mortgaged their homes in order to finance full mouth rehabilitation. For these patients and for every patient who cares so much to invest in their dentistry, we owe it to them to make sure that their investment is protected. Not only that it looks good, but also that it works well and feels good. Because if it's not working right, it's not gonna look good or feel good for too long. If you don't properly control forces, patients may experience pain or breakage of teeth or restorations. Optimizing occlusal forces and as much as possible stabilizing joints and muscles to control pain results in us getting predictable dentistry that can last a long time, hopefully even a lifetime. The bottom line is that unmanaged occlusal risk can literally be equated with risk of failure. Today, I'm going to present to you some common occlusion traps that you can fall into and what the problem is with each trap and reasonable solutions. In the first four traps, we focus on diagnostics. In the next three, we look at function. And in the last two, we focus on treatment planning. Let's get started. 